thank God that I'm in a good mood today. Otherwise, you'd have been in the middle of the road. We have good boy. There, all the girls have come. Okay, you want to sit there? Sit there, no problem. I have no problem. I have no problem. One, one, one rose. No problem. I have no problem. One rose among the thorns. Or oh, one thorn among the roses, whatever you have to say. Never mind. I don't tell him what to do. Come and sign the tape at once. Thank you. Oh, God. Come on, come on, hurry up. Be back, hurry up. Huh? What happened? No, three lectures. Three lectures. I thought there would be one and a half. No, 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 three lectures. Today we have three lectures. Yeah. I finished the whole of the proposal. Proposal is three hours, no? You have to enact it. Yeah. Huh? Are you going to enact it? No. You want to enact it? No. Have, have any one of you seen that movie, My Big Fat Greek Wedding? Have you seen that movie? How many of you have seen a Christian wedding or a Catholic Christian wedding? Yeah. I've seen your wedding. You've seen the wedding. What have you seen there in the wedding? The white black dress. Wow. Come on, what happened? Okay, then. No, I was going to take a shape and take a house and then they say, I do, I do, I do. No, 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 they Not in the church. Question. What you have seen is oh. in the movies. Yeah. Good the, uh, good hi, good evening, ma'am. You come today? Yeah, I have You have a class then. We'll meet afterwards. I got it from my Okay. Uh, we don't kiss in church. Not a what you see, what you see is in the movies. Reception. 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 But in church, no. You can do anything what you want to do outside the church, not in the church. Now, okay. How many of you? How many of you would prefer a proposed marriage, and how many of you would prefer a love marriage? Love marriage. How many? You. No one. Bye bye. Yeah. I will throw you out and make sure nobody marries you. Thank God for that. Let there be silence now. I'm starting with the lesson. Yeah, tell me why. I have to spend my whole Agika life with that person. I'm supposed to spend my life with that person. So I should be comfortable around that person and I should be knowing with whom I'll be spending the rest of my life. Not with a person whom I've just met and then my parents agree that I'm a good guy, a good job. So you don't, so you don't yeah. have much confidence in your no, it's not like that. It's like they must have totally best guy for me. But still, if I'm not comfortable around that guy, I should at least be knowing who I would be spending my life ahead with. So, like, I should have that with that. You should have a Yeah. So, then what happens is if your parents have chosen somebody for you, take time to know the person by going out with the person. Spending some time. Don't make a mistake decision. Yes, yes, no, no. But learn to know the person. Don't you feel that way or you feel that you're trying to do the same thing? Yeah, Vivan, I said no prompting in between. I know you don't you want your inputs. I'll give you time. Yeah. It, what? Like, does it find but when you know, for example, I must be knowing a guy for like about five years or so, maybe, and then my parents tell me that they can choose to marry this guy, then it's fine. Okay. Because even I must be knowing ki how he is, because you can't get to know a person in a month or a two. You at least need to know a person for years so that you get to know ki how they are. I how agree. their nature I agree. is. I agree. I agree. What do you Propose marriage or love marriage? <laughs> 
<laughs> Love marriage. How many of you prefer proposed marriage? <laughs> <laughs> what he said? No marriage. No? No marriage. No marriage. Why? Why no marriage now? <laughs> why no marriage? Why? Tell me the reason why. Is there no marriage family? Very strong statement to make, but why? I don't like it. <laughs> Have you been married before? To like it? Like it? Like it? One moment. Have you had a bad experience? Do you know of a particular couple? who's having a bad experience and therefore you have decided on the basis of what they are going through that you don't want to get married. What is the meaning? Why did you just get to that conclusion? No marriage for me. Why? Life is slowing down. After marriage, life slows down. You think I've grown up? I'm, I'm ancient. I've been, married, I've been married for 55 years. You think I've slowed down and I'm ancient? And travel more, you can. Huh? Oh, no, 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 no. That is a very, very selfish attitude. My God, no, don't call God because God Himself has instituted the, the institution of marriage. He has said that man should not live alone, but he should share his life with the person of the opposite sex. Remember that. With a person of the opposite sex, not the same sex. <laughs> not the same sex. Correct? That is absolutely not allowed. Though the law has now said, yes, 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 gay marriages are legalized and legalized. <laughs> that is not allowed. No. Right. Now, right. 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 Then he has to be or she has to go for counseling. Now there are two reasons. <laughs> 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 oh, are you paying attention? Or I just go back and say that. See, there are two reasons why you prefer a person of the same sex. It could be a mismatch in your DNA and in your RNA. Why the why the cells are, uh, what do I say? Uh, DNA combination. DNA combination. The, the, the combination. And why they are, uh, you know what, uh, realigning themselves, something has gone wrong in the chemical structure. That defect cannot be erased. That is your bad luck. But if there has been some other external Reason, maybe sexual abuse, maybe you've seen something, maybe someone has, you know, as we have, we, as we say today, you know, little children, good touch and bad touch. You tell the children, be careful when you go, let nobody touch you, good touch or bad touch. They don't understand, but they say, no, it's a good touch, it's a bad touch. Immediately they tell you, little children, because it starts from there. Now, recently in our row, which is supposed to be a very, very protected row, a little child was kidnapped. A little child, and all of us are standing there. All of us, of course, my little sister had gone to Cobra Canyon, but some others were standing and talking. The grandmothers were all standing and talking, and the child has just disappeared. Nobody knows where. Till today, they have not found that girl. What do you think could have happened to that child? Destroyed forever. How wicked. And look at the little innocent child. Innocent baby. A baby. Just playing around and just taken away. The grandmother has gone into a shock, deep shock. Now, such type of thing, what if the girl does come back? But it has been, there's something, they have not, you know, they've abused that child. Then what do you think is going to happen to that child? And that child will turn out to be, uh, what to say, a negative character. Unless the person is counseled and counseled and counseled and counseled, even then, and the person whom she gets married to is a very extremely understanding person who will keep on understanding and understanding what that person is going through. Because she's going through it. No fault of hers. She's a girl, that's all. So it's supposed to be a girl. It's supposed to be a beautiful girl. She's a beautiful girl. Is it a curse? Is beauty a curse or a blessing? 
Sometimes it's a curse. Sometimes it's a curse. It's much better. You're safer when you're ugly than when you're beautiful. We want to give you one hard trap. Why you you have some intentions of of, of destroying anybody? Go home. <laughs> what? So this is it. Now, in that case, as I said, if anything wrong has happened and it's created a psychological effect, then of course that can be cured with a lot of counselling. But usually people don't go for this counselling because, my God, how am I going to go and tell that person something? You know, abroad, they, they, are, they take a lot of pressure by saying, I've got an appointment with my shrink. They tell you openly, they're yes. quite proud. They're quite proud. I'm going to my shrink. Just as you say, I'm going to the gym. They say, I'm going to my shrink. I've got an appointment with my shrink. They also say, my God, don't tell anybody I'm going to see a counsellor. Now, why is he called a shrink? Why is that person called a shrink? Because he shrinks your money and he's supposed to be shrinking your problems. Which of the two, I don't know. But very often people have to drop out because the profit is shrinking. The fees are not, not very, very low. They're high. And why are they very, very high? Because the counselor herself or himself gets affected by your problems. Though they say, once you get out of your clinic, once you get out of your your office, you shut the door, you should shut off, completely shut off what you have heard, what you have, you know, experienced. The person cries, the person is in trauma, whatever, whatever. So sometimes, sometimes the client is very violent. We don't know. So that plays a bad effect, has a very bad effect on the counselor. And it keeps on working and working. And the counselor brings her problem or his problem into the into her own home and can destroy her own home. That's why the fees are very high. The fees are very, very high. And this therapy takes a long time because we don't want to let go of the baggage that we're carrying. So I said you have to meet a very understanding person, a very mature person who will understand what you've gone through and support you in every way. Easy to talk, but very difficult to perform because marriage on its own with two normal people is very difficult. It's very difficult. And mostly you will find that the argument between husband and wife is not what you said to me and what I said to you, what your mother said and your grandmother said when they came to visit us. You know, your sister, your mother said this. Your mother, why did your mother have to say such a thing? Why did she come to the house? But she's my mother. So that just because she's your mother, she can keep on saying whatever she says, like saying, and the fight is between husband and wife like that. What the mother said, what the sister said, what the auntie said, what the grand auntie said. Your auntie, your, your, your. I'm perfect. Sometimes, sometimes what you say doesn't hurt you as much as how you say it. Words could be very simple. But the body language that comes out, it's so very, very strong that the words really keep cutting. Right? What you say doesn't hurt as much as how you said it. So they always say, watch out. Keep both your eyes open wide before you get married and then shut them tight after you get married. Don't open your eyes after they are married, after you are married. When I say open your eyes, I mean, I said open your eyes to the faults of the opposite person. This is clear, followed. Now, this year happens to be a marriage proposal between two people, two landlords, both of them doing very, very well, having a lot of property, but they're absolutely immature because they keep quarreling over a little land, a little small portion of land. Now, what happens is in olden days, or even till today, if you go to the village, very nicely, you'll find at night, the fence wall keeps on shifting. Now, it shifts more onto the neighbor's property. The land, let's call it land grabbing. At night, the wall keeps on shifting. Okay? Let, let us steal it. Okay. But then there are times with an understanding between 
two people. I will lend you my workers. Okay, let them because you can't afford to hire labor on your own. I will lend you my own workers. What will be their payment? You have to pay them. Let them send their cattle on your farm <coughs> to meet with us. Understand? So instead of them buying grass, they're sending the cattle to your property and they're eating the grass. So they get their payment. It's an understanding. No writing because people are uneducated. No paperwork, no notary, no law, no lawyers, nothing. Just understanding. <coughs> and that understanding has carried on <coughs> for years and years. <coughs> With the result, those workers have got their own children and their own children that continues and continues and continues until <coughs> realization dawns upon the brand new generation. This is already people are using our land. They have gone and claimed our land. They've gone and claimed the property. And what happens? Quarrel. It was an understanding. I can tell you what happened to my grandfather-in-law. He had a big house in Goa. He shifted to Africa under Idi Amin, that is East Africa, Uganda. Now he was an ivory merchant. Now, ivory was banned, but at that time it was not banned. But he was a very rich man. And he had all the forest officers sitting and eating and dining at his table. So whenever the poachers went from his own servants, they went to poach the elephants. No chief, no officers, forest officers <coughs> stopped him. No forest officers stopped him. They turned a blind eye because they were getting their bribe. And he made a lot and lot of money on ivory. I have got some jewelry, even till today, even the granddaughter-in-law. Now what happened is, his big house in Goa, he left in the hands of a caretaker. That woman was not married. She said, I'm all alone and look after your house. And he was sending money to maintain that house. Unfortunately, she got involved with the man and she had an illegitimate daughter. And she looked after her daughter in that house. After that, that daughter got married and she had her own daughter. And like that, there are four generations living in that house until today the house is not coming to the property of the robots. Now they gone to court to find out. She said, no, I've looked after the house. Where the hell were you? Where the hell were you? But we were sending you money. Money was coming in the form of checks, in the form of bank. Uh, but the statement was not there, you know, that it is your salary. It was just a bank transfer, bank transfer. So nobody knows why that money was getting into the bank. So she has claimed that property. She has claimed that house. Gone. Now, if you want to go and fight, I will have to go and bury myself because my husband is gone. And now I being the daughter-in-law, I have to go and fight, run down to go and each time, forget it. Neither am I interested in the logo property, nor my children who are the real logos are not in, are interested in that property. It's gone. To get that property back, you've got to go to all the old papers. And all the old papers are in Portuguese. I can't read a word of that, of that language. This is our problem. It went understanding, understanding, understanding. Then they suddenly become owners. That was the problem in this lesson, the proposal. <clears throat> okay, now. <coughs> Characters Stepan Stepanovich Chubukov, he's a landowner. Natalia Stepanova, she's a daughter and she's 25 years old. Ivan Vasilevich. Vasilevich, no more. He's a neighbor of Trubuco, a large and hearty, but very suspicious landowner. Not only a suspicious landowner, landowner, he's a hypochondriac. Who's a hypochondriac? A hypochondriac is a man. Pardon me? Any problem. Suddenly he's hungry. He will make a problem on his own. Yes, he will imagine. He'll have imaginary problems. Suddenly his head is spinning. No, 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 my back is spinning. No, 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 I think my ear is spinning. No, no, no. He doesn't know which part of his body. He just imagines that he is having aches and pains as the tension keeps on rising. A drawing room in Chubukov's house. 
Lomo enters, wearing a dress jacket and white gloves. Chubuko rises to meet him. Chubuko, my dear fellow, whom do I see? Ivan Vasilevich. I'm extremely glad. He squeezes his hand. Now, this is a surprise, my darling. How are you? No more. Thank you. And how may you be getting on? Chubuko. We just get along somehow. My angel. Thanks to your prayers and so on. Sit down, please. Do. Now you know. You shouldn't forget all about your neighbors, my darling. My dear fellow, why are you so formal in your getup? Why are you so formal in your getup? Means why have you dressed up in such a formal manner? We're just next to neighbors. Okay, why have you dressed up in an evening dress? Evening dress, gloves, and so on. Can you be going anywhere, my treasure? Lomo, no. I've come only to see you, honored Stepan Stefanovich. Chubuko, and why are you in evening dress, my precious? As if you're paying a New Year's Eve visit. No more. Well, you see, it's like this. <coughs> he takes it down. He takes you down, takes Chubuko down. I come to you, honored Stepan Stepanovich, to trouble you with a request. Not once or twice have I already had the privilege of applying to you for help. And you've always, so to speak, I must ask your pardon. I'm getting excited. I shall drink some water. Honor Stepan Stepanovich. He drinks the water. Chubuko, aside, he has come to borrow money. I shan't give him any. Allow. What is it, my beauty? See how he's talking, huh? Inside he is having different feelings for the man. Externally, he's calling him my darling, my angel, my my what the, whatever my precious whatever whatever all sweet and daring terms you see lomo you see honor stepanich i beg your pardon stepan honor rich i mean i'm awfully excited as you will please notice in short your loan can help me though i don't deserve it of course and haven't any right to count on your assistance chubo Oh, don't go round and round it, darling. Spit it out. Well, no more. One moment, this very minute. Means hold on. I'll tell you just now. I will tell you. The fact is, I've come to ask the hand of your daughter, Natalia Sapanova Novana, in marriage. First half of that. <coughs> yeah. Now what happened is Lomo is the next door neighbor. He's a young man and he has come to Stefan's house. That is Chubukov's house. But Chubukov is also a landowner and Chubukov has about one daughter called Natalia. She's 25 years old, unmarried. So this man is a next door neighbor. He used to come very often to this man's house to, to ask Chubukov, to, to ask for some help. Maybe from some, uh, some farm implements. Maybe some hirelings, maybe some money, mostly it's money. Okay? And this man was lending it to him. No, 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 no. So today, huh? No, no, no. All of you have signed? No. You have not signed? One lakh ka rehenge. It's not an absolute amount. It's not an absolute amount. It's not an absolute amount. Hurry, hurry. All of you have signed otherwise? Pick, pass it up. What did they have? That's the first name, my mother's first name. What is the same name? No more. No more. So, all of from the names which we are calling each other. Oh, sorry, yeah. That is the official names here when they're talking. For example, your official name is Arushi. Your mommy calls you Aru. He call you Aru. Why that? It's a familiarity. It's familiarity. They're neighbors. That's how they call each other short forms. Or make one part of a name which is easy for them to pronounce, perhaps. So then, so Lomo comes to <coughs> Chubukov's house. And he's dressed up in a very formal manner because he's come with a uh, purpose in mind, not an ordinary purpose, not for farm work, 
not to borrow some money, but for some official honorable work. So he says, uh, that is what I, the palm keeps on calling him in very in endearing term, my precious and my darling and my honey, whatever, whatever, whatever. What is it that is bringing you here? And then he says, my purpose of coming here is to ask for your daughter's hand in money. That is all. Now, <coughs> Chukuka, joyfully, by Jove, by God, Ivan Vasilevich, say it again. I didn't hear it all. I mean, are you wondering? How, <clears throat> whether his ears are playing tricks on him, or if really Ivan has come to ask for his daughter's hand in marriage. No more. I have the honor to ask. Chubu, interrupt me. My dear fellow, I'm so glad, and so on, and so on, and so on. Yes, indeed, and all that sort of thing. He embraces and kisses no more. I've been hoping for it for a long time. It's been my continual desire. Thanks to shed a tear, a tear of joy. And I always loved you, my angel, as if you were my own son. May God give you both his help and his love and so on and so much hope. What am I behaving in this idiotic way for? I'm off my balance with joy. Absolutely off my balance. Oh, with all my soul, I go and call Natasha and all that. No more. Greatly moved. Honored Stepan Stepanovich, do you think I may count on her consent? Count on her consent means do you think she will agree to marry me? Why, of course, my darling, and as if she won't consent, she is in love. Again, again means surprised. She is like a lovesick cat. Okay? And so on. Shan't be long. Shan't be long means I won't take long to bring her, to bring her here. Again means surprise. Exit, no more. It's cold and traveling all over, just as if I'd got an examination before me. The great thing is, I must have my mind made up. If I give myself time to think, to hesitate, to talk a lot, to look for an idea or for a real love, then I'll never get married. If I look out for all these qualities, I will never get married. <clears throat> it's cold. Natalia, now from Natasha become Natalia. Look at this, the name is changing. Natalia Stepanovna is an excellent housekeeper. Now she is looking out for the qualities of a wife in this woman. She's an excellent housekeeper. She's not bad looking. She's well educated. What more do I want? But I'm getting a noise in my ears from excitement. So he's examining, he's imagining, imagining his certain things. Yeah. He drinks. In drinks means water he's drinking. And it's impossible for me not to marry. In the first place, I'm already 35. So she's 25 and he's 35. 10 years difference. A very critical age, so to speak. In the second place, I ought to lead a quiet and regular life. I suffer from palpitation. Palpitation means uneven heartbeats. I'm excitable and always getting awfully upset. At this very moment, my lips are trembling. And there's a twitch in my right eyebrow. But the very worst of all is the way I sleep. I no sooner get into bed and begin to go off when suddenly something in my left side gives a pull. And I can feel it in my shoulder and head. So from the leg, it automatically switch to his shoulder and to his head. Every part of his body is affected. I jump up like a lunatic. I walk about a bit and lie down again. But as soon as I begin to get off to sleep, there's another pull. And this may happen is in twenty ten. Is it he is not. He is talking to himself because Chubakov is not there. Chubakov has gone to call Natalia. You people are talking. Who is he talking to? You himself. are talking. Both of you are distracted, and you are distracting me in the bargain. No, I know. Oh, I saw. Now why is he talking to himself? He says talk to himself. You don't talk to yourself. And he's talking loudly. Man. He's not even talking aside. Who said it is loud? It's not written aside. So it's not written loud also. Is your ticket yet? And that I'm talking loudly. And the same thing loudly. Yes. I'm not talking to myself. No. Have I made myself clear? Yes. Can you hear me clearly? Yes. Good. I jump up like a lunatic. I walk about a bit and lie down again. 
But as soon as I begin to get up to sleep, there's another pull. And this may happen 20 times. Natalia Stepanovana comes in. Natalia, well, there, it's you. And Papa said, go. There's a merchant come for his goods. See this, see this, uh, the fun. The merchant come for his goods. Ah, it's difficult he's come to ask To ask for her hand in marriage. But so a woman has come for his goods, for his things. Have you seen that movie, Fiddler on the Roof? My God, all these classics you haven't bothered to see. What do you want to see all Hindi movies where they're running around no, the street no, and no. running in the water and all that? Ah, these are all classics. Watch these classics. They'll add something to your knowledge. Fiddler on the Roof. A very good movie and a hilarious movie is my big fat Greek wedding. My big fat Greek wedding. It tends to be a little boring in the beginning, a little boring, but afterwards it picks up and it is hilarious. But it must be very attentive to understand the Greek and to understand the English. Followed? Okay. Well, there's a merchant come for his goods. How do you do, Ivan Vasilevich? How do you do, Honor Natalia Stepanovana? Natalia, you must excuse my apron and negligee. Now, negligee is supposed to be a nightdress. I'm quite sure she'll have come out into the hall in a nightdress. It's a home dress that she's wearing. They are shelling peas for drying. Shelling peas for drying means what? They're taking the fresh green peas from their pods. They're cleaning the for peas and then dry them up and those dry for keeping them for winter so summer they will dry it and then they will become dehydrated so they will not be attacked by insects and evil and then they can use it they will soak it into the water they will uh, fill up and they can use it as fresh peas for winter you have been shelling peas for dry why haven't you been here for such a long time sit down they seat themselves won't you come and have some lunch? No, 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 thank you. I've already, I've had some already. Then smoke. There are some matchsticks. The weather is splendid now. But yesterday it was so wet that the workmen didn't do anything at all. All day. How much hay have you stacked? Just think. I felt greedy and had a whole field cut. And now I'm not pleased at all. But And now I'm not at all pleased about it because I'm afraid my hay may rot. Why will the hay rot? Why will the hay rot? What? Why will the hay rot? Because yesterday was a wet. Because why will the hay rot? Oh, because yesterday was wet. It was wet. It was raining yesterday. I didn't ask you to say it. <laughs> Foolish fool. Okay, because it was wet, so she and she went and cut extra cows. So we took her for her to dry all that hay and it started rotting. It will be of no use to anybody. I ought to have waited a bit. But what's this? Why are you an evening dress? Well, I never. Are you going to a ball or what? Though I must say, you look much better. Tell me, why you got up? Why have you got up like that? No more. Excited. You see, honored Natalia Stepanovana, the fact is, I've made up my mind to ask you to hear me out. Of course, you'll be surprised and perhaps even angry. But uh, aside, it's awfully cold. Now, he's getting frightened because no courage. The courage is draining him. So he's really cold. It's awfully cold. What's the matter? Pause. Well, no more. I shall try to be brief. You must know, honored Natalia Stepanovana, that I have long since my childhood, in fact, had the privilege of knowing your family. My late aunt and her husband, from whom, as you know, I inherited my land, always had the greatest respect for your father and your late mother. The Lomovs and the Chubukovs have always had the most friendly, and I must, and I might almost say, the most affectionate regard for each other. And as you know, my land is a near neighbor of yours. You will remember 
that my oxen meadows touch your birch wood. Why oxen meadows? Oxen meadows from the name. Oxen will go to eat in those meadows. That's why it's called oxen meadows. And your birch wood mean that the area is full of birch trees. Nathaniel, excuse my interrupting you. You say my oxen meadows, but are they yours? No more. Yes, mine. Nathaniel, what are you talking about? Oxen meadows are ours, not yours. No more. No mine. Honor Natalia Stephanovana. Natalia, well, I never knew that before. How do you make that out? No more. How? I'm speaking of those oxen meadows which are wedged between your birch woods and the burnt marsh. Birch wood and the burnt marsh means the mucky area which they have burnt. They're to harden the soil, they burn that mucky area to remove all the water. And wedge means in between, pushed in between. Natalia, yes, yes, there are. No more. No, you're mistaken. One of Natalia Sapanovana. They're mine. Natalia, just think, Ivan Vasilovich. Now, when they're angry, they're talking to each other in full name. No darling, no angel, no my precious. Just full name and in anger with an exclamation mark. In anger. How long have you been? How long have they been yours? No more. How long? As long as I can remember. Natalia, really? You won't get me to believe that. No more. But you can see from the documents, Honor Natalia Stepanovana, Oxen Meadows, it's true, for once a subject of dispute. Dispute means fight, argument between two families. But now everybody knows that they are mine. There's nothing to argue about. You see, my great, you see, my aunt's grandmother gave the free use of these meadows in perpetuity. Perpetuity means continuously, forever, to the peasants of your father's grandfather. In turn, for which they were to make bricks for her. The peasants belonging to your father's grandfather had the free use of the meadows for 40 years and had got into the habit of regarding them as their own when it happened that Natalia, no, it isn't at all like that. Both grandfather and great grandfather reckoned it that their land extended to burnt marsh, which means that oxen meadows were ours. I don't see what there is to argue about. It's simply silly. No more. I'll show you the document, Natalia Stepanovana. Is <coughs> this the uh, the the grandfather and the great grandfather of the land grabbers? No, 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 no. They were the ones who had understanding that can use it and keep on using it. What is there? We've got so much of so much of grass, so much of hay. Let them use, let them use, and it will go on perpetually. What are you saying? Huh? What was the confusion? Aunt's grandmother gave free use to the means. No more. Aunt's grandmother gave land to Natalia's father. Can you explain it? The land belonged to Lomov's family. His aunt's great grandmother gave that land to be used by Chubukov's or Natalia's great great grandfather's peasants. Okay. So those peasants were making bricks for this old lady. That is for the, for the uh, for, for, that is who's now Ivan's Ivan's Lomov, Ivans. Lomov not Ivan Lomov's Lomov's. Now don't don't interfere. Lomov's aunt and great grand aunt gave the their land that was below, oxen meadows belonged to Lomov. Correct. Now that great grandmother gave the free use of the land to this man, to yeah, to Natalia's yeah, to their workers. Now the workers mean they had to bring their cattle and eat grass from her land. Can use it continuously whenever you want to, but 
you have to make bricks for me. So these peasants were given, giving her labor and she gave them grass. She gave them grass to eat for the animals. Correct? So continuously they were going there for how many years? For 40 years. So ultimately it got into their head that their land is theirs. This particular generation died. The next generation continued. The next, and as it is, the present generation saying it is our land. That's why we are going there eating. And we are making the bricks for them. Actually is the Lomo's land. Lomo's land. But there, there has been an understanding. Okay. So the land belongs to Lomo. But it is shared. The produce of the land, that is the grass, belongs to these peasants. The land belongs to Lomovs. The produce of the land belongs to yeah, Natalia. But they are still making, but the still making bricks. And still making the bricks. How do we know? Why? Why will, if they stop making the bricks, they stop using the land. But after the grant of the land, there was no one to know who make bricks for That is not mentioned here. That is not mentioned here. Whether they are still using the land also, we don't know. But it has gone into the understanding. As paper says, it is Lomovs. But as understanding goes, it is Natalia's. It's an understanding. Nothing in writing. That is the argument. Now here, I'll show you the documents. Now he will show him the documents that the land belongs to them. He cannot show them the documents that the land was loaned to them for free use. That he can't show. He can only show that the land belongs to us. But he cannot show that permission was given by my great great aunt to give it to these people. That she cannot show. Your document is fake. No, there is no document. It's oral word. It's oral word. Permission given was oral. Permission given for your peasants to come and work on my to eat from my land and make my bricks is oral. What is written down is only the map of the land. The map of the land shows it belongs to Lomo. Okay. Natalia, no, you're simply joking or making fun of me. What a surprise. We've had the land for nearly 300 years and then we're suddenly told that it isn't ours. Ivan Vasilevich, I can hardly believe my own ears. These meadows aren't worth much to me. They only come to five desertants and are worth perhaps 300 rubles. But I can't stand unfairness. Say, what will I can't stand unfairness? Okay, so this is a Russian play because they're talking about rubles and the Satans. These are all the rubles is a fraction of the Desitian, huh? Huh? What do you say? What do you say? These are these are currencies of Russia. Russia today also we have rubles. No, today it is now euro. It belongs to euro. Oh, EU. It's a, a yeah. Rubles? No, it is maybe no. But now they have francs is gone, rubles is gone. They all have euros. All of them do. They all have euros. That may be on the west side. West side of Russia. Just check the mobile. I'm quite sure that uh, Russia is belonging to the uh, European Union.